Welcome to the Paperless Productivity Podcast, where we have experts give you the insights, know-how, and resources to help you transform your workplace from paper to digital and making your work life better at the same time. Thanks for joining us. My name is Kevin Legister, your host, and today we're going to talk about how ImageSoft's own accounting department not only went paperless, but improved on the many processes that they are involved with. So with me are a few key people from the accounting team and, and from the IT team at Amazon. We've got Mary Beth, who is a Director of Finance and Human Resources. Hey, Mary Beth. Hey, thanks for having us, Kevin. Yeah. We also got Nathan, who is our on-base administrator. Nathan? Good to be here. Awesome. And we also are joined uh, by Teresa, who is our Business System Analyst. Hello, everyone. So today we're talking about uh, our in-house use of, of OnBase, which is a content repository that has a built-in workflow engine that can route documents based on rules or actions, and it stores uh, a lot of our invoices and paperwork that's uh, connected to accounting. It also has a case management function where you can point and click build, you know, integrated applications. So kind of think about Microsoft on steroids. So, so this is the actual tool that we are using in-house to help with some of the functions of, of our accounting department. And it is some it, it is a tool that Amersoft does sell, so in, in the interest of full disclosure. But you know, very oftentimes, you know, the quality or integrity of a company sometimes is viewed by whether or not they use their own products and, and we certainly do. So Mary Beth, I'll start with you. You know, how has you know Ombase helped with you know, the accounts payable process and, and getting those invoices approved from the various managers and the different things that you have to do with regards to the accounts payable process. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, I guess I'd first like to start with a little bit of history. Um, those of us in finance for years have been using um, OnBase to scan, index, and retrieve all of our documents. And we prided ourselves on our ability to produce any document in seconds to respond to any request. Um, we also bragged about being the only department using OnBase at ImageSoft. What we didn't know is we really were not using OnBase as it was meant to be used. Um, we were a company full of OnBase developers, but we did not have systems for ourselves. And my team, not being technical, had no idea how to get there or really even where there was. Um, so that all changed a few years ago when ImageSoft decided to invest in a couple of internal IT persons, Nathan and Teresa, to build in-house solutions um, that have spanned every department now um, and improved efficiencies everywhere at ImageSoft. Uh, Teresa used to be in our finance department and switched to IT, so that's been particularly helpful as she knows our business needs. And needless to say, our financial minds were blown. Um, that all being said, one of them is accounts payable approval. It's a rather simple system, really, but it saves us tons of time. Uh, many bills are repetitive and expected, such as utilities, um, rent. So kind of expecting them and approvals really aren't necessary. So those don't go through this system. Other bills arrive, which accounting aren't familiar with or expecting, such as professional fees, legal, accountants, things like that. So what we used to do was physically take the invoice to the person that used the service, ask them to approve it and hope they weren't traveling. And if they were traveling, it would sit on their desk until they return, or we started trading emails, which is not super efficient and things get lost. Um, with our new system, the bill is ingested into an on-base workflow and routed to the appropriate person for approval. A person can approve, reject, or even approve it and add a note to it just with one click. Uh, when complete, the bill is stored in on-base as usual. However, now we have the trail of who approved it and when. This has saved us a lot of time and has been especially useful during the current COVID pandemic when we can, simply can't walk to their desk. So that's, that's about it for accounts payable. And, and that's awesome. And, and I know that um, one of the challenges that uh, you guys also had was um, when you mentioned surprise bills was, uh, was to kind of implement a purchase requisition process to show you had some a little bit more visibility in terms of how things were being used. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so that um, came about. There's a, another type of bill that comes into accounting that isn't expected and isn't is something that 
somebody knows about in advance. So it, it really reduces the number of bills that have to go to the accounts payable process. Um, and this way we know they're coming. So if you're uh, somebody in need of something, you fill out a request form in OnBase, and the request is routed to the appropriate approver based on what you want to purchase. After that, it's approved and moves on to accounting. For example, I'll use Amber. Um, marketing may need to cut a check for an upcoming trade show. The event planner will complete the request and attach the invoice or quote. This request will go to the marketing manager, Amber's boss, for approval before accounting creates the check. Another example may be laptops and computer equipment or office supplies. Again, the backup is stored in OnBase along with the trail of who approved the purchase and when. And that's awesome too. And it also helps to avoid those surprise bills and, and can even help with a little bit of you know, financial planning just to see what your flows are going to look like and what your expected you know, outflows mm -hmm. are going to be for, you know, for the month or for the quarter. So, so that, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. So Teresa, you kind of made the move from, you know, being in accounting finance over to the technical side of things. So you, you probably have a unique view or unique <laughs> approach to <laughs> all these things, which, which is, which is awesome. <laughs> um, and, and one of the things that I was just thinking of that, that we, we had a prior conversation about is credit memos. And they're a necessary part of business, you know, as things change, you know, order, orders aren't complete or things different happen. So credit memos need to be issued. And, you know, can you talk a little bit about what, what this process was like and, and what some of the changes that you made to that using this technology? Well, basically, um, like you said, understanding the finance side and the technology side really helped this process because credit memos, they are necessary but they're also an area of accounting that really needs to maintain the strictest internal controls. So we really need a way to audit how this process flows. So basically a credit memo reverses an invoice to a customer. So if it's done improperly or without approval, it can negative to negatively impact the organization. And before using OnBase, discussions concerning the credit memos were started from either emails or verbally talking to the accountant. Unfortunately, if anyone questioned a credit memo, information would not be readily available, including who created it and why, and oversight was nearly impossible. So now, what was created in OnBase, we have a credit memo request that uses Unity Forms and Workflow that requires a review and an approval by a supervisor. And what's even better than that is we then created a mechanism that uses SQL to compare the information housed in OnBase to the information housed within our accounting ERP. Then the controller, she gets to receive a report that's going to let her know of any credit memos that were created in the accounting ERP without any prior approval. And then it also alerts her of any approved credit memos that weren't finished in the ERP. So it basically safeguards, safeguards our ability to prevent fraud and clerical errors that could otherwise compromise the accuracy of our financial statements and affect our bottom line. Wow, that's a fairly um, – that, that's a very, very impressive way to do things. So you're, you're basically taking on base and our ERP system or, you know, or what some might, be, might just generally call the accounting system – they're really just using the information that's in both to kind of compare each other just to make sure that you know, we have the right, you know, accurate information that we're processing the credit memo correctly and that we have adequate tracking on that so nothing's falling through the cracks and and we don't end up in a situation where we're issuing credit memos or we shouldn't or duplicate ones are going out, which which can happen. So it sounds like a pretty impressive system that, that you've developed. So what's great about it is, yes, OnBase has that ability to be able to look, you know, we can use, uh, let me restart. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. No, I'm going to be the time. one that needs a lot of restarts. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what's nice about it is, yes, we created that ability to run reporting off of both systems. And we can look and know exactly if there's a duplicate credit memo created against a specific invoice. They can also add information that allows them to know which invoices have credit memos, what credit memos are outstanding, 
and whether or not that credit memo has been impressed, has been applied to invoicing in the future. Wow. And I'll, I'll pitch this to you, Mary Beth. Um, you know, what, what kind of difference have you seen with, with this process, you know, as far as your team is concerned? Well, I, I think it's the visibility um, just, just into the whole uh, process and also the uh, reduction of accidental things happening. It's very easy to think somebody else is doing something and, or not doing something and you do it. it. It could easily be duplicated. So this really assures that it doesn't. And I get notifications um, every time that credit memos are issued. So if there's something I'm worried about, I know to go look at it and um, investigate what it is or if there's a problem somewhere. So it's, it's been very helpful. Wow. So you get a notification every time a credit memo is being issued. So, so you're, you're aware of that anyway. So nobody has to send you an email and let you know. Um, right. It's just a kind of an automatic process that, that was installed. That, that's, that's really cool. That's awesome. Yes, it is. So, so every, every month, um, there's a fun process that uh, you and your team have to go through, Mary Beth, where you have to basically close out the financials for that month. And uh, I know that involves many steps, and <laughs> it's not always the easiest thing to do. There's a lot of things that you have to track. Um, and, you know, we call that financial closer. That's the general term for, for that. Can you share with us some of the things that, you know, maybe touch on, you know, what was it kind of like before and, and what it's like now in the process and how that's, you know, better managed for you? Sure. I could go on about this process all day. I love it that much. Um, it's uh, There's so many tasks, hundreds literally of tasks that different, different people are responsible for in the accounting department. And you have to produce a lot of them in a certain order. And so to, in order to know if it's time to do your task, you have to know if somebody else did their task. And it's just, it's very confusing and it just involves a lot of asking around and I aming people <laughs> to see where we're at with this process. Um, the tasks, some, some could be monthly, some can be quarterly, some are annually. We can customize the task to only happen in February and October, whatever it is that we want. Um, so each month when we open the month and close, the due dates for the task automatically populate a, a list of task templates that we've created. Um, each task has an owner and a description of how to perform the task. There's also a section where we can fill in notes that apply to the current month as well as the ability to require approval from someone else if needed on that task. Uh, many tasks have subtasks, which can belong to even different people than the task owner. So it is nice for the task owner to be able to see how the subtasks are coming along so they know when they're ready to uh, perform their part and close out that task. Um, we also attach backup documentation to the task for that month such as an Excel spreadsheet, because the accountants can't live without Excel. Um, so we back up everything with Excel, and then we can attach it for that month, and it's stored with the task in OnBase. So every duty performed has an immediate audit trail. Um, if my task is dependent on a task performed by somebody else, I can actually follow their task and be alerted when it's complete, so I know that I can proceed um, with my task. For things such as general ledger account reconciliation, we can enter the GL account balance per our attached spreadsheet. The system then checks the balance we entered to the balance in our ERP system, which is Dynamics SL, and it alerts me if they don't balance. This check is done again automatically before the month is actually closed to be sure nothing snuck into an account accidentally um, after the reconciliation was performed. So it's, this process has been especially valuable right now during the COVID crisis where we're not side by side. We're not discussing the close. Um, and as a, as a department manager, I can always look and see how we're coming. Are we on schedule for the close? Is everybody getting their tasks done? Um, and it really, uh, it's, it's just valuable for me. I have dashboard views into it. I can look at lists. I can always see where everything is at to see if we're on schedule. Um, and I guess, Part of our, our uh, the value to us is that in the event the TASCO owner wins the lottery, never comes back to work, someone else can step right in and perform their month-end tasks 
without missing a beat because everything is included in that in that template for the month. So it's it's a fantastic system. Wow. Now I have to ask this question. Nobody's actually ever won the lottery, right? Not come back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> But uh, oh, I did, you know, if somebody or, you know somebody could be out sick or something, and um, you don't have to be biking them, you know, about how to, how to get that done, so you can do your work. Someone else could just jump in and <laughs> um, theoretically pick up anybody's anybody's tasks with with no issue. So it sounds like even even with the current COVID crisis that's been going on, the pandemic, and having everybody work at home, you guys have been able to really to effectively continue work without really missing a beat. Yeah, we haven't we haven't missed a step. It's been um, it's been like we're all sitting in the office. It's it's really been nice. That's fantastic. So so Nathan, I know that uh, you've uh, you haven't had a chance to chime in yet, but um, one of the things I know that you worked on to to help Mary Beth with and, and the team was was with subscriptions and subscriptions. And Mary Beth touched on this earlier. The, those are often those things that fall through the cracks. They, they come up once a year or once a quarter or something like that, and they're easy to lose track of. Uh, the bills just suddenly show up, um, and, you know, all of a sudden, oh, we have this other item that we need to pay, and, and sometimes even figure that out if it's been too long uh, since the last time we saw a bill from a particular organization. So can you tell us, you know, what are some things you've done to kind of help, help with this and help the team, you know, you know stay on top of these subscriptions? Sure. So if you if you think about you as a person and the subscriptions you have and how many you just kind of like, oh, I'm, whatever, I'm going to set it and forget it and just let it renew, you know, think of that times a dozen or two dozen because that's how many people were just purchasing a subscription to something and then sending the bill off to accounting and letting it go there. There really wasn't much, if if any, oversight, unfortunately, which is you know, kind of how it happens with subscriptions, no matter who or what uh, is getting them. So what we did is we decided to, we didn't want to keep spending money on stuff we didn't need to spend money on. So we put together a very simple solution that lets us keep a record of each individual, individual subscription. So it's going to store basic stuff like, you know, who, what's the company the subscription is through, what's the product. Um, that we're buying? Is it annual? Is it uh, monthly? How are we paying for it? How much is it? Uh, who's the owner? So on and so forth. So uh, right there, that's kind of more information than we had previously. It was a lot of like email and, oh, this looks like it might belong to this department. So I'm going to email the head of that department and hopefully get information on it. So now that we can store all these these records uh, in OnBase, we can do a lot with it. Um, Right now, it's kind of in its infancy. You know, frankly, this is a, a pretty new process. It's been around for maybe a quarter or so, so, so not too long. Um, but uh, what we do is once that record's created, it's going to go into a holding spot, and it's going to wait until, I believe it's 45 days before it's set to expire. And then we're going to start sending off notifications. We're going to send it to um, the department head for whatever department owns that subscription and say, hey, something is, is going to expire you need to take action on it. And then as it gets closer, we'll send more notifications. Um, and then it, it, it just provides a lot of visibility into something that frankly had no visibility previously. So the goal and the hope is that, you know, once it's put in front of um, somebody's face that something they, they own is going to expire, hopefully they'll take action on it. They'll go to our accounting department and say, you know, we don't need this anymore. We've moved on to a different product. Uh, which has happened in the past. We've had uh, two products um, we've had subscriptions to, and, and one product hadn't been used for a couple of years, and we were still paying for it. So um, this this is really just a visibility thing, very simple, um, but it's going to uh, help save a lot of money because we're not going to be paying for stuff we don't need anymore. Wow, that's that's really cool, and um, I, I I know exactly. <laughs> Because I've uh, I've participated in this process before, and I know exactly what that means. Where you're not expecting it, and all of a sudden you get this notification: "Hey, the subscription is is ending, and, and uh, we want to renew it, or we want to get rid of it." And 
and sometimes we, we forget. And uh, I think that's a great process to track that. And that's one of those unnecessary expenses, right? When you have a subscription that nobody's using, but you're still paying it because nobody's really providing any oversight. The bill comes in and you pay it, you know, from the accounting department and, you know, the person that requested is either no longer there or, you know, the team has moved on. So I think that's really good. So along that line, a subscription was, you know, subscriptions are fairly, you know, periodic in terms of how often they recur. But the one thing that isn't periodic are gift cards. And I know sometimes these gift cards, you know, when they pop up, different people will do it at random different times. And, you know, these are sometimes unexpected expenses as well. So I know in our company uh, at ImageSoft, you know, managers will sometimes will do that for their team when somebody, you know, does a, has a standout performance on something or does something really well. You want to, you know, reward somebody for extra effort, which is great. I know for accounting, this can kind of create sometimes a little bit of a headache. So, so Mary Beth, can you just talk a little bit about what, what some of the headaches have been and challenges have been with gift cards and, and, and what have we done for that? Yeah, so it's a pretty simple process and it, it um, really solves a variety of issues. Um, managers, you know, they're doing something nice and they want to get a gift card for somebody who went above and beyond um, and they would expense it on their expense report after the fact. Um, so nobody knew that it was coming, no being it was happening. And one of the things about gift cards is they have to go through payroll and we need to gross them up and include them in, in the employee's wages. And human resources couldn't do that because they didn't know they existed. And it was, um, it was just getting to be a, a growing problem. Um, so in our new system, um, finance just retains an inventory of gift cards. And if a manager decides they want a gift card, they'll request one using this process. And when it's approved, an alert is sent to human resources so that they can record it properly. I mean, it's as simple as that. There's no more coming through on expense reports. Um, basically, we told the managers that they, if they bought one on their own, they better like it because they own it. They will not get reimbursed for it. So uh, it's very easy to do, and it just solves a lot of issues. HR gets an alert that says a gift card was issued, has all the information, and they can include it in their wages on the next payroll run. So very easy. Wow, that's that's great. That's fantastic. And another really smart way to think things out of the box and, and, and bring a process under control. So I'm going to open this up for a moment uh, to Teresa, Mary Beth, and Nathan. Is there anything else that you can think of that, you know, that you guys have done in the accounting department that you think our listeners might want to hear that, you know, it's a question I haven't asked or something that's prompted in your mind that you think, you know, this would be something worthwhile talking about. I'll give you guys the floor for a moment to, to share some, any ideas. Hmm. Teresa, you're probably the best one to answer this. Cause you know, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know all of them. All I know is that, uh, I mean, it's even the small things like foldering. And I think about, um, we did a, file cabinet for sales tax, basically all of our taxes, including corporate tax, but sales tax was the big one. And it was so helpful because I, like we mentioned, I went from finance into IT, but I started off as a tax accountant for an aviation fuel company. And if we had on base, life would have been so much easier. And doing taxes from month to month, needing backup information where you have to look at previous tax returns or invoices or bill of ladings and you're in a really dirty attic trying to dig through dozens upon dozens of legal boxes trying to find information. Being able to have that right at your fingertips and on base not only saves time, um, it saves stains in your pants from crawling through various shelving units um, so I think foldering was something that, you know, we implemented that was just great for the tax um, processing. Um, my favorite is the financial close, personally. That's my personal favorite. That's the one I loved building the most. That's the one I love using the most. Um, so that was my personal favorite. I'm not sure, um, Mary Beth, like, other than the financial close, which one you might pinpoint, but I think that one's my personal favorite. Yeah, that's totally my favorite. That's where I see the, the most benefit um, across the whole department. 
and it's really sped up our close process. Um, I, I would say it cut days off of our monthly close process, just having the efficiency and the visibility into everything. It, it's really valuable. Anything on your end, Nathan, that you can think of? I think probably just improvements to some of the existing uh, processes. Me personally, I'm a big oversight and like request proponent just so there's visibility into things. Um, the gift card and the subscription process that we talked about here are very simple and kind of in, in their infancy, like I said. So I, I do have some, you know, churning in the back of my head type enhancements uh, for different request notifications. Uh, more visibility, creating dashboards for that kind of stuff, uh, just so the the business users have as much information as possible at their fingertips. Um, so those are those are my long term goals to help them even more than we already have. Yeah, and to to add on to the subscription um, discussion is that um, if if a bill were to come in now with our new approval process, um, it wouldn't necessarily automatically get paid it would go through the approval process however a majority of the subscriptions were charged to a credit card with an auto renewal and we didn't know that it was auto renewing until we got the credit card bill and it was already done and there there you have it for another year or so and the person would say oh no I'm not using that anymore so the the problem it's really solved um, in my mind is getting those automatic um, renewals that are charged to your credit card solve that problem. Um, I forgot what it was going to say. Well, well, I suppose there's a, probably a whole bunch more things and ins and outs of the, uh, the accounting process in terms of you know, what has been done. And I'm sure you guys also have some dreams for the future in terms of what could be done and some additional things that you can add on to that. I know Nathan and Teresa, you two are often thinking that very same question and, and figuring out how to do things better. And, and it just sounds just overall, just from listening to this, getting the information into OnBase upfront and then pushing that information out to the right person at the right time is so critical and so key to making your processes more efficient, giving it visibility, and then also making it work when you know you can't be in the office and you're remote uh, makes a huge difference. And I know even for me, being part of this process too, there's been times where I've had to do things and I remember getting off of, off of a plane and needed to approve something for payment right away and, and being able to do that just on my mobile phone. And that connects me to the entire process without me having to open up a laptop or go back to my desk or wait to get back to the office to approve anything. Um, those things have made such a huge difference uh, for me being a user of the system as opposed to those in the accounting. So I, I think it just made the, the process smoother overall for everybody. Uh, in, in the company, we meet in accounting. We meet with um, with IT regularly, and we have a spreadsheet of initiatives that we want. To make. Our appetites have been whetted, <laughs> so we're ready to, to expand. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Can, can you can you share um, anything that might be on the horizon? Maybe something that uh, you guys are thinking of that you, you'd like to focus on. Uh, well, I know um, Teresa's got the, the comprehensive spreadsheet probably in front of her, but I know uh, some of it is, is a dashboarding of financial information for um, for the owners and appropriate people to see. Um, there's a lot to do with our project accounting that we really haven't touched on, our credit card processing. Um, what am I missing, Teresa? <laughs> oh, there's so many things on the list at this point, <laughs> but I think it's opening up the sharing of information between finance and professional services, for example. Um, things sometimes get created almost in a vacuum where one team has information in on base, another team maybe has it in Excel. And what we plan on doing in the future is actually combining it. So both teams are going to be using the same information in the same place for on base, and it's going to create an easier way to to let people know when changes are coming. So finance can do their job, PS can do their job, and it's so much smoother. Yeah, we've, um, through the years, spent a lot of time just, uh, you know, a salesperson calls us and says, I need, I need a copy of this customer's 
um, invoices. We need invoice such and such, or we need to know this or that. And it's all information that is in on base, but nobody knew what was there or how to get to it. So I guess our hope is that people will be a lot more self-sufficient once everything is in the same place and everybody knows that that's where it is. That's great. And thank you for uh, sharing all, all of those. So I just, I want to thank, uh, thank you, Mary Beth and Teresa and Nathan for, you know, for being on the podcast with us today and, and sharing your thoughts and your experiences and the things that you've done to improve, you know, the accounting functions and the various aspects of that and how you've made a change, you know, a beneficial change for you at ImageSoft and for the users and the people in this company and, and just help everything overall in terms of how the business is run. And, and I think for our listeners too, I think that, uh, that this is really helpful information to let them know that there are solutions that are out there. There are things that can be done, even though you may not be able to buy some of this stuff off the shelf. I mean, it's kind of hard to go, you're not going to go and buy a whole subscription management system for a, a small business, but having a tool like OnBase really does give you a lot of flexibility and freedom to do these types of things and, and to create those solutions that, that make a difference. So I want to thank all three of you for being on the call today. Thanks for having us, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So this has been a great discussion. And, um, you know, again, it's just impressive in terms of all the work that you guys have done. Uh, for our listeners, if you are interested in, in reading and learning a little bit more about uh, how we use this tool and, and what this tool can possibly provide for you, um, you can go to imagesoftinc.com and click on the back office icon, and that will take you to our back office page where you can see some information in terms of uh, accounts payable, contract management, vendor management, and some other things that might be of interest to you. So thank you again for joining us today. Hopefully this has been helpful, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks again for joining us on this podcast. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to Paperless Productivity, where we tackle some of the biggest paper-based pain points facing organizations today. We'll see you next time.